that are going on yet we'll wait for those to finish. Somewhere, Will, at the, for our presentation. There's our budget. Hasn't changed much from the last one, but got a little bit more money. We did uh, pick up a little bit better on our contributions to the Grafton Food Pantry last month, so we appreciate that. <coughs> Hope it continues. We're up to 1861 on the Membership list. It's uh, going to make 1900 before the year's over, that's for sure. We're going to remind you we still are needing the volunteers, ideas, anything. We, don't, we keep asking and uh, we don't get much response. So somebody ought to think uh, let's think about volunteering. And uh, you must have some ideas. Mention them to us, and we'll try to act on your ideas. Computer news, we got a little bit of uh, news on what's happened around the lab since uh, last month. One of the things we're noticing in the lab this, this <coughs> last month was the number of people who have reported being stuck by this ransomware. How many people here in the crowd have got a call on a phone saying that we're here to help and we found your computer has been infected? How many of you have? Frank, you're stealing my thunder. <laughs> yeah. Okay, about a fourth to maybe a third of the people have received it. Now I'd like the rest of you to put the word out to all your friends that live out here and anywhere. <laughs> As far as that goes, but particularly other seniors who live out here, that if anybody calls, anybody, and if you call a number and it's on the screen, that's just as bad. If there's a phone number on the screen, probably worse. <laughs> yeah, you won't have a chance to hang up because you're already committed. Uh, 
don't do it. It's very easy if you listen to their spiel to get sucked in. They are experts at this. And their Indian accent, usually, which I have no comment on what that means. It just means it's in that country. It, they are highly educated people. They understand the computers fairly well. What if they're from Microsoft? Yeah. They don't do it. There's no one, no, one, no one from Microsoft will call you. No one from Google. <coughs> No, none of the companies will call you and say they think there's a problem with your computer. It's all a scam. So you'll see with the presentation today is how involved it gets. But the, what I'm really asking you is to go out and talk to people when you talk, talk about, say, there's a computer meeting and we were talking about this ransomware or a scam, scams on, they're pulling on people. And here's what you do. You don't do anything. You turn, you don't, the guy calls you, you say, nope, bye, click, hang up. Uh, it's the savers. Don't even let, let, let him, if he says he's here to help, that's about as all you want to do. You definitely do not want to type in anything he tells you to type into your computer. And we, keep telling people this, and we keep telling them when they come in, did you hear? Yeah, I heard that, but I I thought he was not the nice. They're very good. <laughs> it's usually, they are very convincing. So don't even listen to them. So that's that. And we want you all to volunteer, raise your hand, say, I will volunteer to tell people and all your friends that this is a scam out here, and it's I think the uh, callers have figured out this is a 5,000 home area and the phone number is 515. Exchange is a very good number to try. And you'll get somebody who may give in. And once they give in, once you give, you type in a number on your computer or do a few things he tells you to do, you might be in big problems. Okay, you will no, be. Let, me, let me do my thing. Okay. <laughs> so, we uh, also had an uh, invitation this month to uh, do a radio show on Huffman Radio. The Computer Club has been sort of suggested to see what we could do at producing a show. A monthly, weekly, bi-weekly. So, anybody here that has a bug to be on radio, <laughs> Come on up and talk to us. We're not, we didn't make no comment yet. Yeah. Uh, Frank, on, on that last the, the, the scan thing, you do get something that pops up on your screen and it, it'll lock up your computer. You can't do anything. You can't yeah. click on anything. You can't, you can't get out of it. But the thing is, the <laughs> power button down for about five seconds and it'll go quick and shut off. Yeah. So that, that kind of, hopefully it'll be gone. Will will tell us all about that problem of getting out of it. So, maybe. Yeah. So the radio thing is just a suggestion, and it would be a way to get the message out. And the message now is really important to get this message out about this. The scams are getting worse. Problem: the number of people that came in is, I think, something like six people last month have come in, and I think two of them. Let them in their computer, and one paid them. <coughs> and I've heard that good. of stories of five hundred dollars. So don't do it. Windows is coming out with a new edition this month. It starts on the twelfth, but I don't think you'll see it until the end, towards the end of the month, on your computer. It's called the Creator's Edition. It will replace the anniversary edition we had for six months only, or so. And it has quite a few new features. So next month we'll show you some of those. But again, this is another one of those things that's weird. It's a, it'll be about a four gigabyte download. <coughs> so it's gonna take maybe two, three hours, four hours in some kids say, since maybe more to get it on your computer. 
and up and running. So if you see your screen, if you, you go in there at night and you say, well, my computer was off, but now I see the screen's on. <coughs> hmm. And then you'll turn back and look at it and see it's dead again. You'll turn it off. You hold down the power key. That might be uh, disastrous. Don't, if you ever have a big download come into your computer, let it complete and be aware that it's going to happen sometime in the end of April or after. I don't know how, how fast they're going to roll it out. It depends on how many problems they get when they get it out there, I suppose. Um, so, another thing we need to do is get a volunteer or, uh, or two volunteers, three volunteers, or one, uh, or one volunteer. <laughs> we'll be happy with one. But we could use two or three for the donuts uh, as standby. A person would not be 100% responsible for getting it set up. It would be standby. It would be when one of the other members of the team has a day off or travels. Any other comments? Uh, well, I don't have right. volunteer. No, it's, it's for the coffee. Yeah, coffee, donuts. coffee and donuts, yeah. It's the setup in here on the first Saturday of the month. So let's see me after meeting. And uh, let's see, that's about it of the news that we have for you. Training. I have a slide for you. You do. <coughs> Well, Will, we just pulled half your slides out of the presentation. Yeah, Frank you did. took it from like, from like yeah. All right. In the month of April, we've got six classes scheduled and um, kind of covering a lot of different things. But uh, next Monday, there's going to be a basic Windows 10 class. And this is for people that just got onto Windows 10 or say you don't like it because you can't find everything. It doesn't go near as deep as Will does on his. And you, you know it's going to be basic because I'm teaching it. So it's got to be really simple. <laughs> So if you can make it at 1 o'clock at, at the computer lab. Then we're going to have three consecutive Wednesday nights, and Will's going to teach the uh, LibreOffice. Now, if you're not familiar with that, it's a free download, and, and it compares directly with Microsoft Office Suite and, you know, the, our Office 365, and you know that you have to pay for that, where Libre, you don't have to pay. So if you don't use it much, I'm taking some of your talk now. No, it's fine. If you, if you don't really need to use um, like a Microsoft Word or Excel or PowerPoint, LibreOffice is really a, a decent comparison. And he will compare it you know, to, the, um, to Office 365. But in the middle, right after LibreWriter, which is like Word, um, George is going to have a Microsoft Word class. So you can go to the, to the um, Writer class, and then the following week, you go to George's Word class, and you can see the difference between the two. You know, just a week apart. Most of us can remember a week. Sometimes we don't remember a month, but remember a week. So think about that. And then um, uh, Bruce is going to have a class on the 24th on Gmail. I know quite a few of you have Gmail. There's a lot of uh, things you can do with, with Gmail that you may not know. So kind of think about that. But uh, once again, six classes. Uh, the reminders will be sent out. Jim's done a really nice job sending the reminders out on the classes. Uh, we also have it posted on the bulletin board in the uh, lab. It comes out in the newsletter. It should be on the screen there in front of the lab. So, I mean, if you say, I didn't know you had that class, you probably didn't take the glasses off or something. But uh, we were trying to get a lot of information out. If you have any requests for, for uh, classes, see me, and we'll try to get a schedule. If, if we get enough people or if you want to put it on, we'll, we'll get it set up. Uh, we're a little, a little slow for May. I only got one class right now for May, but uh, hopefully next month we have our meeting. I can tell you we got five or six. Thanks. Thanks, Russ. Ralph, we should say all right. Uh, reminder: our dues. You can pay them out in the lobby at the end of the meeting. It's five dollars for renewal. Goes until June 30th. Just remember, June 30th. That's it. After that, it's $25 for 
for anybody who procrastinates. It's the procrastination fine we have. Windows Vista and support, it's going to be, it's going away, just like XP. Doesn't mean you can't use it, but it won't be updated for viruses, it won't be updated for any improvements any longer. So remember that it's on its way, slowly going away. If you have it and it's running fine, it's okay, but you won't be getting updates. So, you know, that is, uh, if you're running, uh, it just is not the best operating system to continue to run when you don't get the updates. But in some cases it might work. It will work. If it's working good for you now, it most likely will go for another year or two without a problem. Okay, we have a few community prop matters. This is uh, the board meeting schedule. April 12th is the working meeting and the board meeting is the 26th. We also have a spring uh, consumer showcase coming up next week. Thursday, how many is, everybody's been to those, right? Yeah. yeah. Go to this one too, keep everybody happy. <laughs> it's, a, it's a slightly new twist. And then this is one that you might not know about. I went on it like two years ago to the uh, high school to see uh, what our tax pay, tax what dollars are going for. And uh, anyone who will go cannot say they're, that they're impressed and it really works. There really is a different school district than what you remember. It's more like a college setup. They have, uh, they don't meet, classes don't meet every day. They have uh, three days a week, two days a week. They have a classroom activity than the other days they have independent study and the teacher is available for that whole period to talk to individual students which I, you know makes a lot of sense with everybody on computers they do their things submitted to a teacher by email or electronic mail and uh, they all have cloud all have computers they all have uh, every student in the Huntley School District has a Chromecast computer now, and that computer is registered to a server in the school. So when they're in school, they can't get anything else. So it works out well. So if you want to go, you got to go to, if there's no cost for this, it's a school bus trip over there because parking at the school is somewhat tight. Um, they'll have a school bus pick up you from here and take you over to the high school. And there'll be a meeting. You'll meet some students. It's a, uh, when you see the facility, the $30 million they spent like two years ago and so, it is a, a very good presentation. It makes you feel proud. And it's one of the lowest cost school districts per student in this in the in the state actually. It's uh, very economical. So I think you can find a lot of information if you come. Okay, transomware time. Will come on up and tell us the story. <clears throat> you told most of the story. <laughs> 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 well, good morning. <clears throat> My name is Will Gertig. I uh, live here in the community. I run a small consulting business after hours, and I teach in the computer club, as Ralph already indicated. Um, I asked to do this presentation uh, specifically because I've been getting calls from some of my clients, both um, existing and new ones, about help. I'm stuck. I'm locked out. I can't do anything. What do I do? Serious stuff here. I, this, I, I really don't want to make light of this at all. 
it's 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 not a a situation that most people can get out of. So it's very serious. And if you use your computer to store anything that's important to you, you could lose it all. <coughs> Let's see if I can figure out how to use this thing. Down, down, down. That's the wrong button. That's the right button. All right. So first, I want to talk a little bit more about what the current scams are today. I'll talk a little bit about what ransomware is um, and what to do with what happens. And similar situations that you, see, you will see that will make you vulnerable. Um, then remediation and prevention. Okay. So we are really in a digital world. We have become reliant upon our, com our computers to do all kinds of communication. Um, email is probably the most prevalent thing. Facebook is used very high, very heavily with this, this community and, and our age group. Uh, we are wary, but we are uninformed, quite honestly. Um, we don't know what we don't know, and we allow people to talk us into doing all kinds of things. Uh, I've got a client who was talked into buying this super duper fancy computer, and she absolutely hates it. But the peer pressure associated with buying this thing, because her neighbor is a little bit more technology savvy, the peer pressure that she went through was overwhelming. And so she's not, now she's got a piece of hardware that she hates and a smartphone that she doesn't like on a service that she's stuck on for two years. So the peer pressure that you feel from others is absolutely daunting. I mean, you cannot help get around it, especially if this person is your neighbor and you're talking with them and it, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty engaged. So the, the most current thing that I want to indicate to you is that artificial computer intelligence is becoming very, very good. Computer speech is almost to the point where you can't tell if it's a computer or a person. How many of you are familiar with uh, the Amazon Echo or the Dot or the Google Home system? Raise your hands. Look at the voice quality in that thing. It can hear, it can absolutely understand what you're saying. And it can respond in a voice that sounds really close, like it's a person. And if you're on a phone, it does sound like a person. Um, I recently got a call from a, a, an unknown number. Now, keep in mind that I'm, I'm a computer professional. So when these people call me, I love to jerk their cheeks. <laughs> I'll keep them on the phone for an hour and a half because they don't make any money unless they're, they're pushing their product. These people are just contractors. You know, for every sale that they make or for every time they hack into your system, they get 50 bucks. So if they can do three of those in, a, in an afternoon, they just pay 200, uh, 200, 150 bucks. So it's easy money for them and they're really good at what they're doing. So I keep them on the phone so they don't make anything and they hate me. <laughs> but I got a call and it started out initially with a little bit of a clunk and then a voice came up and said, excuse me, I, have, I had a problem with my headset. And then a couple seconds later, it transferred me over to a real person. Now, that really sounded like a real person. Now, this happened to be a sales call. Nothing malicious. But I took it in. I should have stopped immediately when it came up on caller ID. And I didn't recognize the phone number. My new rule. My new rule. If I don't recognize the number, I don't answer it. Period. If it's important, it'll roll to voicemail, and I'll pick it up later. But if I don't recognize the number or the number's not in my caller list, I'm not answering. So those of you that are calling my business, please don't become offended if I don't answer your call because it rolls directly, especially if you're out of state. You brought your, your uh, recent mover and you brought your phone with you, your cell phone number, a lot of people do that. I'm getting calls now from people in uh, that used to be in Virginia or in Pennsylvania, and they live now in the community, but they brought their cell phone numbers with them. I'm not gonna answer that because I have no idea who it is. But if it's legit, the person will leave a message. So 
I'm not doing it, and I strongly recommend you adopt the same thing. I don't know if you saw this week's Sunday, or maybe it was last week's. Um, second page, there was a retraction printed about a scam that they found. And what it was, what it was, there were two individual ads that were advertising for home or personal assistance, just with email addresses. No contact information, no phone number, no nothing. Sunday pulled them and apologized for them, but it slipped through. I mean, this is a reputable newspaper that got caught. And all they can do is say, we're sorry, it slipped through. Don't get caught. Kick up that wariness you have internally a couple of notches and don't trust it. Um, phone scams. This one's been advertised on TV. Sometimes people don't listen to the news because it's so depressing. But it's, can you hear me now? You pick up the phone and a person says, can you hear me? And you'll answer normally. What do you answer? Yes. yes. What have they just done? They have recorded your acceptance, the yes, and they will use that vocalization to purchase other things on the internet. And all of a sudden you're getting things on your phone number that were purchased against your phone number, your account, and when you play back disputing it, they'll play back the yes, you accepted this. So. Don't, can you hear me now? Hang it up, okay? Or better yet, just wait for somebody to say something. It'll drop. They'll realize they, they've got someone who's not gonna answer, and they'll go away. Or just simply hang it up. Used to be where we could blow a whistle into the phone. And that would be irritating to the person, but most of these are, are computerized calls, so they computers don't care about whistles. Um, as Frank mentioned, Microsoft will never call you. They don't care. <laughs> they don't quite well. Yeah, they they will never call you because they your system is not functioning properly. They've got their money their money from you. They don't care. They really don't need to speak with you. Now there's a new, new swing to this. There used to be a statement that they used to say all the time where the IRS will never call you. That's not true anymore. The IRS has recently contracted with an outside collection firm to do collections. Now, what? so they've modified the statement to say the IRS will never call you unless they send you a letter first. So you got to be up to date on your mail or just don't accept a call. <coughs> First off, don't put yourself in that position, in that position but I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> um, there are other tech support companies that will do the same. That they identify themselves as being a Microsoft partner or this is Microsoft or I'm Microtech. They'll do all kinds of different swings on the word to try to get you to to listen to their spiel. And their spiel is very, very convincing. And quite honestly, they prey on the people that live in this community. They know our phone numbers. They know the 669, 659, 515 extensions. They know that the majority of us are mature adults that really don't keep up with this stuff. And that's that opens the door. The last thing I want to talk about are computer innovations, and that's exactly where we get into with ransomware. Ransomware is a very sophisticated level of encryption. It is introduced typically by some sort of a scam or some sort of a uh, uh, malware product. Um, its purpose is to lock all your files and folders. Locks it out completely. Um, once your system is locked, you typically have to pay to unlock the file, to get a key, a digital key, to unlock the file. Um, this is very frightening, because one day you have full access to all of your information on your computer, and the next day you have nothing. It is completely locked out. It is like a brick. 
it turns on, but you get this screen that says, warning, your system has been hacked, or something to that effect. They make it sound more official. I'll show you an example of what it looks like. The fee's expensive. It's expensive. It can be generally between 250 and 1,000 bucks. And if you got pictures of your daughter's wedding on that thing, you'll pay the 1,000 bucks. If that's the only place you've got those pictures, you'll pay it. But then the question comes is, if they hack you now, what's to prevent you them from hacking you again? They've already been in once. So now what do you do? So the best way to keep from getting bit by this is to prepare not to get bit. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, the old version of ransomware, the one that came out about a year, two years ago, you have to make the payment in internet money called bitcoins. Now that's a whole different set of currency that, that the, the underground market on the internet uses to transfer funds. Um, it's a whole nother layer of currency. And if you're curious about how it works, just Google Bitcoin and you'll get more information on it than, you, than what you know. But basically what you would have to do is exchange real money into this internet money and then make the payment to the person using that internet money. It's kind of like using, you know, a different like German marks or things like that. Ransomware generally takes two paths. The first path is from something that you have allowed into your computer in like the form of virus or spyware. Um, spyware is pretty common. Um, and you get it lots of different ways. But most of the time you get it because you're just not paying attention to where you're clicking or what you're putting in. Um, a good piece of malware detection, something like superant.spyware or malwarebytes.org will pretty much always catch this stuff. I'm not gonna say it's gonna always catch it, but if your computer is running really strangely and you don't have one of those two products running on it, you need to get it running. That's Frank am I correct in saying that's generally one of the first things we put on our systems if you yeah. bring it, yeah. Yeah, it fixes a lot of problems. Again, superantispyware.com or malwarebytes.org. They have free versions of both. You can upgrade them to paid versions and the paid versions makes them run on a regular basis automatically without you touching them. The free versions you have to run manually, but they work just as well. <clears throat> the, other, the older version is this no warning lockout that's being morphed as criminals learn more how to prey on us. Um, what will typically, what used to typically happen is a little pop-up window would come up and say, uh, your, your computer is, is um, infected. Please call this number for assistance. And it would look very official, okay? It would look like it would come from Norton or look like it would come from a known virus protection website. And it, they, these guys are really good at making this stuff look well. So you would call that number. Well, the newest version is a uh, pop-up window with a chat session will open up. And it'll be from the scammer. And again, this is generally introduced as a result of spyware around your system. They can't get into your system until they've got a conduit. So as soon as that spyware is there, they have the conduit. Now, how do you get this spyware? Lots of different ways, but generally, most often, it's by going to a website that you've mistyped. So say you're trying to go to google.com. You type in google.co, and it may take you to a, a spurious website where it says, this is an invalid website, you know, whatever, and you may have been tapped already. Okay, um, porn sites. I used to say porn sites were the source of all evil. Not anymore. You can get these pieces of, of spyware from lots of different sources. So just be careful how you, how you use the internet. Go to known websites and never, ever, ever click a link that you've gotten in your email. Never, ever, ever. Don't trust it. I can't say it again. Can't see it enough. Don't trust your email. 
Okay. Okay. Well, um, people are used to clicking on the red X to close the window. This thing pop up. Usually there's a red X there, but sometimes it's part of the whole picture. You're clicking on that sign and close it. It's kind of just a click on the uh, I'll show. I've got a, I've got an example of that, Ken. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, five years ago, you 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 would have been tapped into this as a result of a virus. I'm going to talk a little bit about a scam that happened to one of my clients. I'm going to leave her name out of it, but I'm going to give you the real the real story here. Now, generally, this. Conversation starts by either a chat session where they identify themselves from being from a known source, or this 800 number popped up and you called it because, quite honestly, they framed you. So they'll give you all kinds of stories. They'll tell you that your system is spewing viruses out, is, is spewing viruses out onto the internet, or it is very under maintained and needs service, or the, the, the common one is your drivers are not up to date, and therefore you're not getting the best performance in your system. Um, then they ask you if, if, if it's a phone call, if they can access your system, and they ask you for generally your IP address, and they'll tell you how to get it, and then they're in. They tell you eventually, after screwing around a lot, that they have repaired your system. Okay, they've done whatever they need to do. And, but to keep it current, they're going to refer you to one of their exclusive tech, tech um, support partners. Now keep in mind that you've let them in because you trusted the source. And in the case that I'm trying to explain, the source was a pop-up window from Norton. And this person knew, the person, the scammer, made the presumption that since Norton has 80% of the market and knows that most people in this community have Comcast, which uses Norton, all of a sudden you've got this trust relationship. The person said, I'm from Norton, and I'm here to help you. Thank God you called me. I would have never known. And you let him in your computer. And while this guy is dazzling you with techno babble as he's got the screens going and changing and things, someone else is downloading crap into your machine. Now, here's the deal. They think that they, they convince you that this service contract is the best way to go because they can keep your machine up to date, no problem at all. And even though it's Norton, you know, you need this other special service to help you. But we've got a special deal for you. We're gonna, instead of our, our $300 normal price, we're only gonna give you for 200 because you're a special Norton customer. Wow, that sounds great. So you give them your credit card and they charge you and you think everything is fine. They've even gotten to the point now where before they used to charge a card and run. Now they'll wait for a day or two. Just in case you feel that there's been some sort of a scam involved. Because when you call back to complain, they'll say, oh, we're absolutely legitimate. In fact, we haven't even charged your card yet. And you feel better. And you let them go through. Two weeks later, you get a pop-up from this technical support company using the, the special program that they did, something like System Watcher or Digitech, Tech, Digitechnology, says you've got a problem. So you call them back. Okay, now keep in mind that it's not Norton that says they called, it's this other new partner. So you call them up and the partner says, oh geez, you know, after after going through more techno babble, they say, oh geez, the problem that you've got isn't covered by your contract. 
it's going to cost you another 149 bucks. Now you don't know what to do. You're starting to suspect there's something wrong. And they do their best to try to talk you off the ledge. Because they want that 149 bucks. What do you do? Well, in the case of this particular lady, she paid the 149 bucks. So she's into this for um, 200 to start with, another 100 and a half now. And guess what? It happened again two weeks later. That's when I got a phone call. Now keep in mind that they've had her credit card for a month already. Okay? Now, is this third party organization legit? Have they called themselves Digitech? I can't tell you one way or the other. But anybody that keeps calling me and asking me for money, I'm going to question that. In fact, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even have allowed it in the first place. Okay? That's oh, and the other part I did, I didn't tell you. What you sometimes might see if you don't want to pay that 149 bucks, they will flip a switch inside your computer remotely and lock it, and that's what you see. And it is completely locked. You turn your machine on, and that's exactly what you'll see. Now, were you doing anything illegal? No. Were you doing anything wrong? No. But it's still been locked. This is what's called the crypto lock virus. And it, it's a slightly older version. But the locking of your system is just, I mean, it stops you from doing anything. You can't, you turn the machine on, and this is what you get. And sometimes you get a phone number that says whatever. The threat that says you have 72 hours to pay the fine, otherwise you will be arrested. Well, sometimes it's otherwise you will be erased. And when I say erased, they'll get into your system and wipe your data. So even if you do pay the fine, they've got control of your machine, whether you like it or not. Have I put enough fear into you? Because that's really what the intent is here. So, what happened? Well, you failed victim to a, a salesman selling snake oil. Okay, these people are very smooth in doing what they're doing. They make their money out of bilking people like yourself. How do you stop it? If they call, just hang up. If you get a pop-up window, as Ken indicated earlier, power off your system. We typically tell you never to shut it down by pulling the plug. But if you've got a tower, pull the plug. If you've got a laptop, press and hold that power button until the thing turns off. Now at this point, I haven't seen where um, tablets like iPads or, or Galaxies have been impacted, but they could be. Turning the machine off is your best defense. If you turn it back, if you get any kind of little pop on, you might have a chance in not getting locked out. If you've already been locked out, you're screwed. <laughs> Honestly, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. Yes, it is all gone. If you are locked, you have to consider this to be gone. External hard drives that you have plugged in may also be locked. That's a new twist. So if you're doing an online backup or using Windows to backup your system onto an offline drive, which many of you should be doing, not only is your system locked, but your backup is locked. Now you've got nothing to go back to. <clears throat> Offline drives. That's a drive where you do a backup and then you unplug it. That's offline. 
if they're not attached to your computer and your system gets locked, you're not going to have a problem, right? Make sense? Shake your head, yes. Yes. So what am I saying? I'm saying you've got to have two drives to back things up. One you leave attached to the computer, and one that you back up and unplug it. What's that going to cost you? Depending on how much data you've got, maybe a hundred bucks for the two drives. Is a hundred dollars worth your information you've got in your computer? Maybe, maybe not. You're the one that can judge that. I can't. But consider the stuff that you've got on there. If you've spent hundreds of dollars for music, downloading all of those things, if you've taken pictures of any vacation or anything <laughs> that you consider precious, that's probably worth something to you. Is it worth $100 in protection? Keep in mind that if you have indeed allowed someone into your machine because they enticed you to do so, you may have been infected, but not locked out. Okay? It's just they haven't tapped you yet, but they can. Now, there are services that appear absolutely legitimate that you've talked to either on the phone, generally it's a phone conversation in this case, and they've convinced you that they needed to put you on some sort of a maintenance plan. <clears throat> generally it's maintenance for this situation. And you've let them in there and they have indeed improved the operation of your system. But in the meantime, they're watching everything you're doing they're collecting all your credit card information from all the websites that you've gone to. Basically, they, they are completely spying on what you're doing. They gave you something that, in, that helped, but they're taking far more away than, than what you did. And you may never, ever know it. I'll go down, there we go. If you have indeed allowed a person into your machine for any reason, you, mo we, we can't tell. If you were to bring your system to me because you said you allowed XYZ company in and they did maintenance on the machine, but it appears to be working just fine, we can't tell. We can run every virus scan in the world, every tool, in, in, infection tool in the world against your system, and it may look just fine. It's because these aren't viruses. These aren't pieces of, of malware. These many times aren't even pieces of software. They have got access into your machine. And they can do anything they want to at any time. So if you have done this before, be afraid. <laughs> be very afraid. <coughs> If you've been locked out, and this is really an after the, after the point, first thing you need to do is call your bank. You need to cancel that credit card, and banks are very efficient in handling these kinds of things. They've seen lots of them. They know exactly what to do, and they'll take care of your financial end. Okay? Um, you may also need to call your brokerage house, if you have a brokerage house. Because it's not only the credit card that you use that may be a problem, but if they've locked your system, they probably have access to your knowing that you've got a, a uh, Smith Barney account or something of that, of that nature. And they may have been tracking for a while. So you need to call your brokerage house. In the case, in one of the cases where I talked to my client, he called the brokerage house and they immediately put a suspend on all activities. And they issued him a password that they mailed to him that would allow him to do anything within that 30-day period. So this password, I don't even know what it was, a bunch of numbers, characters, whatever. Every time he called the brokerage house, he had to give them that physical password in order to make the transaction happen. If you get a charge like, if, if this does happen to you, you dispute any charges. If you are are currently 
if you let someone in at, at some point in time and you're still getting charges from this Digitech company, dispute the charges. The credit card company will go back and generally credit you for all of those charges. So it's not money that's necessarily wasted, but there is a time limit. So as I say, this also applies if you think that you've been the victim of being coached, coaxed into allowing someone else into your system. These people, I cannot say it enough, these people are very smooth. And they're not all Indian based. You, you used to be able to say, oh, this is a scam from a boiler room and, it's, and it comes from India. Uh uh. These people are very good at what they do. Very good. And they will identify themselves as being from Best Buy, from Norton, from McAfee, from Comcast. Anything they can to get into your system. So, what's the rule? You get a phone call, not familiar, click. You get a pop up in your system, power it down immediately. Now, if those things do happen, turn it off immediately. Take it to a professional. As Ken suggested, if it's a pop-up, turn it off, give it a couple of minutes, and then power it back on, see if it's working normally. But suspect that you've been hacked, because you probably have. Now, first thing I would do is I would run a really good malware check against the system. A full deep scan, if you've got Norton, um, they've got, Norton's got something called the deep scan, I would run that. I would also run a malware bytes or a, or a uh, super anti-spyware check and let those run and use the most intensive method of doing that as possible. Almost all the time, the only way to fix a lockout is to rebuild the system. I mean, if it's locked out, even if you pay the ransom, how do you know they're not going to tap in again? How are you really protecting yourself? The only way is to start from scratch. And we can do that. But if your data is not on something that's offline, if it hasn't been put on a CD or a DVD, or if it's not on an offline backup, your data is gone. discussed this already a little bit, but I hear this all the time. Oh, they, the guy was so nice on the phone. He, he told me that we had all of these problems and he did get into my machine and now it's running much better. Is that really true? I mean, maybe he fixed some, did some, some maintenance enhancement things, but you let him in. It's like letting somebody into your house. They had the ability to see in your system whether it's worth hacking. What are you doing with it? Just like you let that repairman in from the washing machine, from the washing machine company. You let him into the house. Did you give him free reign of the house, or were you with him the whole time? Most of us know enough to say, okay, if, if I let somebody into my house, I need to watch what they're doing. But most of us don't also know anything about what's inside of our computers. So how do you know that he didn't do something? Or how do you know that someone else that he's working with didn't do something? Okay? You can gamble if you choose. You really can. How many of you go to Vegas and, and gamble? Do you know you lose all the time? You rarely win. <laughs> The best way to keep from doing this is to educate yourself. <coughs> I'm reading a book right now that a client recommended. It's called Inevitables, and it's by a guy by the name of Kevin Kelly. And Kevin Kelly basically says in his first chapter that every 18 months, something that we depend on will change drastically, and we'll have to start over again. Now think about that. That means in an 18-month period, Google is going to change their Gmail interface, and it's going to screw you up or Yahoo is going to change their email interface, or Microsoft Office is going to go through a major upgrade and move everything around on you. 
you just have to be prepared to keep updated with these things. Or you have to get out of the digital age. The option is keep up or exit. Now, if you only use your computer for email, if you only occasionally use it for Facebook or something like that, you get nothing important on it, okay, you're not really keeping up to date because you really don't have anything that you have to worry about. But I can tell you that every time Google changes something, or Microsoft changes something, or um, Yahoo changes something, I'm getting phone calls because you're frustrated and don't like it. Can't help you. They're going to change. It's inevitable, hence the name of the book. Inevitable. It's going to happen. Never, ever, ever give personal information out to anyone. Okay? Social security number, driver's license, Medicare card, wherever you bank, any of that kind of stuff. And shred any documentation that you get in your home that comes from these places. I get my meds shipped to me on a quarterly basis from a big company out in Colorado. <coughs> All that information that comes with those meds, you know, that big wad of paper that tells you how to use it, it's all personal information. It's got my name on it, my address on it, my what I'm taking. Someone gets a hold of that, I could be in a world of hurt. They could identify themselves as being from the doctor's office. This is Dr. Smith from so-and-so's office. I want to talk to you about your whatever prescription. Whammo. I've been suckered in. Anything that has any kind of personal information belongs to the shredder. Anything. <clears throat> That means all those credit card solicitations you get, all of that stuff, and buy a good shredder. They're cheap enough now. Never, ever, ever allow someone, someone into your machine unless you trust them. Now, that being said, there are some legitimate service companies that will get into your machine. For instance, you call Norton. And you're saying, I'm having a problem with my Norton subscription. And it's not from Comcast. You're paying for Norton. You call them, and they try to ask you some questions, and they eventually will say, will you allow me into your machine? That's acceptable. Because you're giving them one-way access, and they have a whole series of tools that they will generally tell you to use to, to allow them to come in. They'll generally establish what's called a web access, okay? And they'll come in that way. But it's a one-time deal, and they can't get back in again. Know that smartphones and tablets are susceptible to these kinds of things. Maybe not at the same level, but your smartphone can be, can be tagged. You're accessing the internet on it, right? Most people don't have any kind of virus protection at all under, under smartphones. Okay, if you're interested, all the major manufacturers have them received with some free ones. Go to your iPhone store or your Google App Store and search free antivirus. And they're there. Know that Comcast, Norton, AT&T will never, ever, ever call you about a problem. All of that communication needs to come from you. Never trust any link that you get in an email. And when you get an email, make sure that it really is from the company that you say it is, that they say they are. For instance, chase.com versus chase.au.com or chasefinancial.com. There's no such thing as chasefinancial.com, but it sure sounds official, doesn't it? If something doesn't look right, it probably isn't. Now, we're past the days of misspellings and, and fuzzy logos on, on, on fraudulent emails. These guys are really good. So I have to go back and tell you, don't click on any link that comes in an email. It's hard not to. But don't do it.
I spent about the last 45 minutes talking about the current scams, frightening the pants off of you. That was the intent. <laughs> this stuff is serious. And you are so vulnerable just because you're not up to date. This happens not, not, not only mature adults, but it happens in business all the time. Security companies spend millions of dollars every year educating their people not to allow these kinds of things through. And yet they happen. That happened because they're good at what they do. When they get into you, when they get into that phone call, you answer that call, they've got you right away. Because you've already you've made yourself available to them. And they're smooth in what they do, even in business. So we're all susceptible to this. So what we talked about was the current scams. We talked a little bit about ransomware. We talked about how you might prevent yourself from it. And really most of it is what you can do, all about what you can do. It's all about knowledge that you have to gain for yourself. Once you get these kinds of things, we may be able to help you. But then again, we may not. And the only true way, if you've let someone into your system, to clear that problem, to fix that problem, is to reload it. And if we reload it, we're going to need your original software that came with it. Because remember, it's like a brand new machine. If you've got Windows 10, we can always put a Windows 10 image on your system. Okay? But we won't have Microsoft Word, we won't, we won't have PowerPoint, we won't have all of those other tools that you might have paid for because we won't have the licenses for them. All of that needs to be put back on. I talked a little bit about offline backups. Um, we typically have classes that talk about backup in our um, workshops, right? Uh, Ralph, do we have anything coming up to you? Yeah, we do. We do. We have a class on backup. Please, please, please attend. You need to understand how this works. I don't want to have to have another phone call from a person saying, help, I'm stuck, and I don't know what to do. And I don't want to have the conversation that says, sorry, there's nothing I can do. And get that look of shock on their faces. The link will be in the presentation that will be posted. Um, Heindel Security is an outstanding source to get more information on ransomware, what it looks like, how it's morphing. This is kept up to date regularly. So they're very aware of the latest scams, the latest way to get into it, the latest way to protect yourself. If you're interested, take a look at that. Questions? Um, right here. I have Comcast. Yep. And does that have malware in there? Such a thing? It does if you've loaded it. It's the Comcast version of Norton. And if you've downloaded it into your system, it does have a certain degree of malware protection. Keep in mind that Norton doesn't catch everything. So I recommend that you have a secondary tool on there, either super anti-spyware or malware bytes. Malware bytes. M A L W A R E B Y T E S. Thank you. Get it at malwarebytes.org. Okay. There's a question back there. Well, um, you know, I've always heard that you really shouldn't have two different virus softwares on one machine that sometimes causes problems. You know, that, that's a really good point. And I'm that when they're talking like that, most of the tools today won't really even allow you to do that. So if you have for instance, if you buy your machine and it comes with McAfee with a 30-day trial, and you try to install Norton, Norton will tell you there's another one in there. What do you want me to do about it? And generally, it'll take it out. So I, we're talking antivirus packages. Spyware packages are always a good supplement. So malwarebytes.org and super anti-spyware are supplements. They're not freestanding antivirus packages. They're supplements to look specifically for spyware, adware, and privacy. Can you tell me uh, whether Ultimate's cloud storage is safe if this happens? Jury's still out. Um, 
Some companies have a way of doing it. Some companies don't. Okay, jury's out on that one. I could not get a definitive answer as to whether or not cloud would work. I honestly don't know. Does all of this apply to Mac computers? No. No, Macs are generally not in impacted by this. Um, in fact, if, if they call you and you give them the IP of the Mac and they get in, they'll, they'll disconnect immediately. Because quite honestly, there's not enough Macs out there, about, out there to worry about infecting them. Back to the Yeah, well, uh, I have a computer for sale cheap. Just see me if you want to buy it. <laughs> um, why would I want to buy a computer? I've already got 11 of my own house. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, uh, just a thought. I would like everybody to raise their hand who's going to go out and tell all your friends about what you heard today. Okay, this is good. Maybe we'll get our message out there some way. So, and also, anybody interested in the radio? And helping with that project, if we decide to do it, please come up and talk to me. Yeah. Hey, Will. 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 Is this a. We had a question was this an April Fool's joke? No. <laughs> it is not. It is real okay. Well. See you next week, folks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>